Welcome back to Oysters and hey there hockey fans. Nick here and today we're going to look at the NHL standings now that we are past the Thanksgiving mark and of course for all my stateside twisters out there hope you guys had a wonderful holiday. So the reason why we're going to examine the standings now is because there's really a rule of thumb when it comes to the NHL at this point in the season. So if your team is in a playoff spot at the Thanksgiving mark it's pretty likely that they'll actually make the playoffs or at the least they'll have a chance at competing for a playoff spot for a majority of the season. So I want to look into the standings right now, see who's there, and whether or not I think that they're going to stay in a playoff spot. So if you like NHL analysis, make sure you join the Twist Brigade by hitting that red subscribe button down below. I'm trying to put out a hockey analysis video once a week on this channel, in addition to other hockey-related content. So here with my standings, I'm going off of points percentage, because I think games played is certainly a factor here. And in addition, I actually have in my spreadsheet a couple of columns including strength of schedule and what's called the simple rating system or SRS. These two metrics are in relation primarily to goal differential and they're coming from hockeyreference.com. I'm not going to lean on them a whole lot but I will definitely call them out here and there. And then at the very end we have the team's regulation record. I think that's really important as well in terms of evaluating whether or not this team really is that kind of team that's going to make some noise in the playoffs. We're going to start with the Metropolitan Division, and the Carolina Hurricanes are on top with an 806 points percentage. Yeah, their strength of schedule is actually the second weakest in the NHL, but nonetheless, guys, 13-3 and regulation record. That is unbelievable. So I think that they are a lock to make the playoffs. The next team under them, the Washington Capitals, they're 12-3 and in regulation. So those are the two best regulation records in that division and two of the best in the NHL. So for Washington to be doing this without Nicholas Backstrom, I see them as a lock for the playoffs as well. The next team are the New York Rangers, and they have been a little bit more surprising than I would have thought. They've been pretty consistently a very good team overall, and right now they have a 10-4 and regulation record, and their 7-11 points percentage is a tick above a few other teams in that division. So I, I am a little hesitant to call them a lock, but the sample size right now and the results, I think that definitely points to them making the playoffs. Maybe not as third place. Maybe they make it in as a wild card, but nonetheless, I think that they're going to get in. In fourth and fifth are a couple of teams who are certainly taking us by surprise so far. So the Columbus Blue Jackets in fourth with an 11-6-0 record. Their regulation record is 6-6. Six and six. I mean, for them to be in anywhere near the playoffs right now is shocking considering most of us would have probably predicted them to finish at the bottom of the division. Um, I do not know if they're going to be able to keep this up, to be honest with you, but with a record like that, I would think that they can at least stay with the pack for a fair amount of the season. Below them are the New Jersey Devils. They are 8-5-4 with a 7-6 and six regulation record. However, unlike Columbus, they have a very hard strength of schedule so far, second in the NHL. So for them to be putting up those results, I would rather trust in a team like New Jersey to make the playoffs or challenge for that first wild card versus a team like Columbus. In sixth, we have the Pittsburgh Penguins with a 9-6-4 and four record with a 5-5 five and five regulation record. And they're kind of turning the corner, trending in the right direction a little bit. I mean, as I've said before, Mike Sullivan handles injuries better than maybe any other coach out there. So for them to still be right there with the pack is a testament to his coaching abilities and just the overall makeup of this team. So it's hard for me not to think that they'll at least challenge for a spot for the remainder of the season. But in my uh, season predictions, I did say they were going to find themselves on the outside of the playoff picture. Next up are the Philadelphia Flyers with an 8-6-4 record. They are 7-6 and six in regulation, and they just lost to Florida. And they've had the hardest strength of schedule, at least according to the metric here. So for them to still be with the pack, more or less, even though that they're in 7th, they could win three games in a row and find themselves in a playoff spot. So you've got to think about the goaltending they've received so far as a uh, reason why they're still with the pack right now. So given their strength of schedule, kind of like New Jersey, I could almost see those two teams battling it out for a wild card spot. And then below them, I mean, this is one of the biggest surprises in a negative way when it comes to the NHL so far. The Islanders are 5-9-2. and two. They are just 5-9 and nine in regulation. I know this team started on the road for like, what, what was that, 14 games, 13 games? And they haven't been playing well at home, but that's because of some injuries that have come in. But when you look at this gap here, a 375 points percentage and everybody else above them 
is over the 500 mark. I hate to say this, even with the best coach in the NHL in Barry Trotz, I think this is too much ground to make up right now. I honestly do. So I had them as my Stanley Cup pick, by the way. Uh, but now I don't know if they can leapfrog some of these other teams. Now we'll look at the Atlantic Division, and there's a very clear divider between the top four and the bottom four. So again, this is points percentage. Florida, 14, 2, and 3. That's with the seventh rated strength of schedule. They have a 10 and 2 record. So that's the best win percentage in regulation. There's no reason why this team can't be at least second place in this division, if not first. Tampa Bay, 11, 4, and 3, with a 6 and 4 regulation record and the fourth hardest strength of schedule so far. And of course, they've done this with some injuries. So again, these two teams might be battling it out as we get to the end of the year for uh, first place in the Atlantic. Toronto, they've been pretty hot recently, yeah? They are 14, 6, and 1, and they're 11 and 6 in regulation. So that would be the uh, fifth best regulation record in the Eastern Conference there. So I see them as a clear playoff team as well. Jack Campbell's playing fantastic for them. I thought that he would be in the Vezina conversation when we got to the start of this season. And then Boston, again, on points percentage, they've only played 16 games. They're 10 and 6 and 0 with a 9 and 6 regulation record. Nothing too flashy from the Bruins so far this year. But again, accounting for the loss of Tuka Rask, the loss of David Krejci, this team's actually doing pretty darn well. I, I can't count the Bruins out of uh, cementing themselves in the playoff picture. Then you get to the bottom four teams. And again, that divider between a playoff contender versus a non-playoff team, I think it's pretty clear here. The Red Wings, nonetheless, are surprising at 9, 9, and 3. And they have a 6 and 9 regulation record. So that does tell you a little bit that they're not quite as powerful as a team like Toronto or Boston. Then you have the Buffalo Sabres at 7, 10, and 2. 5 and 10 in regulation. So they're definitely sliding and looking more like the Sabres we expected. Below them are the Montreal Canadiens at 5, 14, and 2. With a 5 and 14 regulation record. I expected them to finish 7th in that division this year. And you have the Ottawa Senators at 4, 12, and 1. A disappointment for sure, given you know the progression that the team had made last year. They are 4 and 12 in regulation, although they have the third hardest schedule. So when I look at the playoff teams out of this conference, I would start with in the Metropolitan Division. The Carolina Hurricanes, I think, are a lock. The Capitals are a lock. I don't know if the Rangers are going to continue and finish in third place in this division, but I saw the way they manhandled the Islanders last night. I think that they're a lock. Um, I'll wait on wild cards here. In the Atlantic, I'm going to say Florida and Tampa. Tampa to be to be doing this with their injuries. You know, it's just a testament as to how talented they are. And I I trust the, the Bruins over the Maple Leafs, even though they lost a couple of key players in the offseason. So I still think that Toronto makes it as a wild card because they could just beat up on some of those bottom feeders in the division. So I still think that you'll have four teams out of the Atlantic in the playoffs. And then you would have either Columbus, New Jersey, Pittsburgh, or Philadelphia making the playoffs out of the Metropolitan Division. So who do you pick, really? First of all, with the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins, of course, they have Crosby. Why would you bet against Crosby? He hasn't missed the playoffs ever in his career, or at least not since he was a rookie. So it would be hard for me to pick against Pittsburgh, but that's what I did to start the season. Philadelphia has a trend of missing the playoffs and then making it the next year. They've repeated that, I think, the last eight years. So you would actually want to pick them, but do you really rely on Carter Hart to stay the course the rest of this season, not to mention Martin Jones? Do you pick the New Jersey Devils, coached by Lindy Ruff, who are getting quite a lot of productivity out of their young forward core? Or do you pick the Columbus Blue Jackets, who are riding this sort of emotional wave uh, from the passing of uh, Matisse Keith Lennox? So I really don't know who it's going to be. I don't at this point. It's hard to bet against Crosby, but... I don't know, man. Don't sleep on the Devils. That's what I would say. Now let's look at the Western Conference, and we'll start with the Central Division. So in first place, we have the Minnesota Wild at 12-6-1 with a 7-6 and regulation record. I thought it might be a little bit better for them, but nonetheless, this team has been really good under Dean Evason ever since he you know, came behind the bench. I, I still see Minnesota as a lock here because they've been consistently a fairly good team to start this year. Colorado is second place in terms of points percentage at 10 Five and one with a nine and five regulation record. And this team is definitely turning it on as of late. Even without Nathan McKinnon, you have Kadri riding a, a point streak. Makar has just looked like 
the Norris runaway at this point. So I think this team has finally figured out who they are after they missed a f- or lost a few pieces in the offseason. So I still see them as a lock in this division as well. Now the picture starts to get really interesting here with spots three through five, if not three through six. So the St. Louis Blues on the year are 10, seven, and two with a respectable nine and seven regulation record. However, they started the season five and zero, oh, so they've definitely cooled down a little bit. Nonetheless, it's kind of hard to imagine this team missing the playoffs given you know they were in the Stanley Cup final a couple years ago and have been in the playoffs ever since. So I still want to think that they are a playoff team. Kind of like the Rangers, I don't know if they're going to finish in third though. In fourth place are the Winnipeg Jets, 9, 6, and 4 with a 7 and 6 regulation record. The Jets have been kind of a conundrum this year. I, I think that they've at times looked like the Jets that I expected them to be. I thought they'd be second in that division this year. But recently they've been sliding a little bit and they're not fighting that many critical injuries out there either. So they are a head scratcher to say the least, but they just have so much talent. I can't see them like falling out of the playoff picture. In fifth place are the Nashville Predators at 10, 8, and 1. They are 7 and 8 in regulation. And this team, they started the season actually pretty good. Um, So they've tailed off just a little bit. Nonetheless, I think of that second half run they made last season. And even though they're not as scorching hot, they're still playing better than I would have expected them to. So I don't really see a reason why they can't at least challenge for a playoff spot for most of the rest of the season. And then we get to the Dallas Stars at 8, 7, and 2 for 6th place in the division, just 4 and 7 in regulation. And I know that they're above that NHL 500 mark, but nonetheless, I I just don't trust the Dallas Stars. They don't have enough consistency with their offense, so I don't see them competing for a playoff spot. The last two teams here, we've got the Chicago Blackhawks at 6, 11, and 2. They are 4 and 11 in regulation. I think they're 6 and 4 in their past 10, though, so they're actually playing pretty well. But kind of like the Islanders, there's just too much of a gap between them and the teams above them for them to get back to the playoff picture. And then you have the Arizona Coyotes at 4, 14, and 2 with a 2 and 14 regulation record. They do have the hardest schedule so far in the division. Sixth is their strength of schedule. But yeah, I mean, they're not going anywhere this year, let's be honest. And lastly, let's look at the Pacific Division. So Edmonton and Calgary are 1 and 2. The Oilers have a slight lead when it comes to points percentage. They are 14, 5, and 0. They're 11 and 5 in regulation, but they have the weakest strength of schedule so far. So they might not exactly produce at this click for the remainder of the season, but nonetheless, they're just a really consistent team. Ever since Dave Tippett came behind the bench there, uh, Edmonton, I think, is a lock for sure. Calgary is just behind them at 12, 3, and 5. However, they have an 11 and 3 regulation record, so that's better than Edmonton's. And this team is kind of coming out of nowhere, at least in terms of my expectations from them. I thought they'd be more toward the bottom, like around sixth. But with Jacob Markstrom playing like he did two years ago, if not better, probably even better, this guy is certainly going to be a Vezina contender. And yeah, I don't see why they would fall out at this point, given the separation between them and a team that is in fourth or fifth place. In third are the Vegas Golden Knights with a 12 and 8 record, including 10 and 8 in regulation. Do note they have the third weakest strength of schedule at this time, but for them to be 12 and 8 right now, given all the injuries that they've had, that's actually pretty impressive. They got Pacioretty back recently, Stone's back now, Lanner is playing very well too. So I still think Vegas is going to be a playoff lock in this division, and I actually think they might still finish second, but not first. Then we see all three California teams in spots four, five, and six. So the Anaheim Ducks are in fourth. They are one of the big surprises this year. They are 10, seven, and three with a seven and seven regulation record. This team is actually finding offense even without last season's, last season's leading scorer, Maxime Comtois, and uh, Ricard Raquel is out as well. So who knows, maybe this team could actually stay the course and contend for a playoff spot this year. And you notice that with them and with the Sharks, who I'll talk about next, Their points percentage is right up there with a couple of those wildcard contenders in the Central too. So it's not like the Pacific is that much worse than the Central this year. Then we get to my team, the San Jose Sharks. So they are 10, 8, and 1 with an 8 and 8 regulation record. They do have the hardest strength of schedule so far in the division at ninth. So who knows, maybe they could contend with a team like the Ducks for fourth place in that division. I think that they might be overachieving just a little bit here because James Reimer has been fantastic so far. They need that goaltending from Aiden Hill, though, if they want to be a playoff contender, I believe. 
In sixth place, we have the LA Kings. They are 8-8-3 eight, eight, and three with a 5-8 and eight regulation record. This team has been disappointing a little bit, I would say, and they've been pretty streaky so far, too. I know they had, like, what, a seven-game winning streak earlier on. So for them to be just at 500, it kind of goes to show that I don't see them exactly making the playoffs this year. In seventh, we have the Vancouver Canucks. They are 6-12-2 with a 4-12 and 12 regulation record. Certainly a disappointment. I mean, you have to think that some big changes are coming, if not this season, certainly in the offseason. And then in last place are the Seattle Kraken, which really surprises me. I thought that they would be a playoff contender given the goaltending that they have. Pretty sturdy defense on the backside too. They are 6-12-1 with just a 6-12 and regulation record. This team is just atrocious on the power play, or at least they're not getting the results out there. And Grubauer has certainly not been the same, neither has Drieger for that matter. I think at some point they will put it together, but I think already it's probably too late for them to be a playoff contender. So when looking at the Western Conference to determine my locks for the playoffs, we'll start with the Central. I'll say Minnesota and Colorado are clear locks. And then if I had to pick another team out of St. Louis, Winnipeg, and Nashville, I... I think I would still pick the Blues at this point, even though I think Winnipeg, from a roster standpoint, might be better. So I'll say those three. The Jets and the Predators, I think, could still stay in playoff contention for the remainder of the season and battle it out for one of the wild cards. Uh, at least Nashville has more offense than Dallas does. So I'll put Winnipeg and Nashville as sort of my playoff hopefuls. And then in the Pacific Division, I think Edmonton is a lock. I think Vegas finishes second. I, I do, especially once they get more of their personnel back. Calgary, I still think is a lock though, because there's enough separation between the Flames and the teams below them. So I say all three of them. And then I think Anaheim competes for a playoff spot. I think that since they're actually providing some offense out there, why not? They could possibly get in. And as I said before, them and San Jose points percentage wise are right up there with, with teams like Winnipeg and Nashville. So I think Anaheim competes. I think San Jose would be kind of on the bubble of contending for a playoff spot this year. As I mentioned earlier, Aiden Hill would have to really step his game up. Uh, so I think the Sharks are going to be kind of an outlier, and that's where I draw the line. So really, when we look when we look at the wild cards, Winnipeg, Nashville, Anaheim, and San Jose would be competing for, for two wild card spots. So I would still think that Anaheim would get it, and I, I wouldn't want to rule out the Jets because, again, I think that they can put it together. They've just been kind of inconsistent to start the season so far. Anyway, Twisters, who do you think are the 16 playoff teams based on the results that we've seen so far? I want to know your thoughts down in the comments below. Stick around for more hockey analysis. Make sure that if you haven't already, hit the red subscribe button down below and the notifications bell. That way you know when I'm uploading content. You can also see the video description if you want to follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram, and there's some other good stuff in that description down below as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Once again, I'm Nick. I'll catch you Twisters later. Ciao.